Okay, so let's get started. We have our little sumo uh, soft guy here today. We have our Artex Space Spider. And we're gonna go ahead and scan this guy. We're gonna take it start to finish, and we should be done in three to five minutes. So we're gonna do it a little bit lower resolution to keep the video moving along, but we're gonna show you the entire process. So let's get started. I'm gonna flip the button up to start recording. And I have real-time fusion on, so we're actually creating a mesh on the fly. All right, now we're gonna flip them over and get the bottom. Sometimes we'll get sumo, this guy with two, sometimes three scans, but usually two is enough. But because scanning is so fast, we'll usually just grab a third to be safe. Quick one there. All right, flip them over. Okay, so it's very important that you get overlap. So even though I've scanned his, his entire torso, when we flip him over, we still wanna make sure we get part of that so that we have common points so that we can align our multiple scans. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna close this out. And because I was running real-time fusion, we have some mesh files that I'm just gonna clean up. We don't need them. They just show better on the screen while you're scanning. So now I'm gonna take these into the editor. I'm gonna do an erase one at a time. There is an automatic base removal function, but I prefer to come in here myself afterward and just pick it. So we paint it, it's going to intelligently detect uh, all the base that it was sitting on. We just erase that. And do for the other two. Erase that. And the last one. erase that. So we're going to turn these both back on now. I'm going to close those. Uh, I did skip a step. I'm going to do a fine registration real quick. That's actually taking and doing an alignment of all the frames that we just captured within each individual scan. So we've got three scans and it does a fine, fine adjustment on those. And now I'm going to go ahead and do an alignment and I'm just going to use automatic align. It's a fairly new feature. It works really well, uh, especially with parts with rich geometry like the sumo guy. So it's going to automatically detect features and align those uh, all by itself, we hope. And it looks like we're good. Sometimes we'll turn off the actual scan texture and kind of do a little sanity check. Looks good there. We're going to apply that. And now that we've got them aligned, we're going to do a global registration. And this is going to take the three scans and make sure that all the frames are aligned within the multiple scans. Uh, so we always want to run global registration before we fuse this and create a mesh from our point cloud data. Everything we're dealing with right now is still points. So when we're scanning this, we're capturing a million points. We're actually using those points and aligning those uh, using the software algorithms. It looks like we're good. We do a quick check of our uh, quality numbers. It's looking really good. I'm going to do an outlier removal to clean up some of this noise. Sometimes people, people can skip that and it'll just leave little crumbs in space uh, that we can filter out afterwards. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and run it, and we're gonna process this at uh, uh, 500 microns, so um, just to keep the speed moving. And basically, that's gonna de determine how many triangles we're overlaying those points while we create the mesh.
Okay, so that's done. You can see that all the noise has been removed or most of it. And next I'm gonna go ahead and do the sharp fusion where we're gonna take polygons and wrap those over those uh, points. And again, we're gonna run it 0.5 and we're gonna do it watertight. So if we're 3D printing this model, uh, it'll come in and there's no holes. So your 3D printing software will um, easily process the data. Okay, so there's our mesh. Um, and again, this is lower resolution considerably than what we would normally process at with the Space Spider. But I do like to show the uh, triangles. It really gives you an idea what our resolution is. So we could go down to about a fifth of the size that you see here, which is almost overkill, especially if you're 3D printing the part. It's just gonna make the file more heavy and, and more uh, time, um, take more time to process and get ready, things like that. So if you're doing quality control and things like that, you might process at a higher resolution. But for 3D printing, this would actually be fine. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is, just in case we had any noise that made it through, we're gonna filter that out. Let me go back to my solid view here. Get any crumbs out in space that may have made it through and just delete them. And that's pretty quick, so that's done. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, simplify that mesh even further. Well, we could, but because we process at a lower resolution, uh, we really don't need to. It's only 210 polygons. Um, that's pretty light. So I'm gonna turn on these other scans to the point cloud, turn on the color, and now I'm gonna apply the color and wrap that uh, UV map, the 2D color images around our mesh. Okay, so now you can see our color's been applied. Um, there's some uh, settings you can do here if you wanna correct the gamma a little bit, um, but the sliders are somewhat automatic. They try to do a couple things that make it more, more realistic. So uh, as you can see here, um, pretty realistic, not too bad. Um, it's gonna look different on any monitor, but you get an idea. Uh, these scanners are very popular in Hollywood, uh, World War Z, um, Sleepy Hollow on Fox have used them, used them for CGI. So um, the color that you get out of our tech scanners really can't be beat. And in another tutorial, I'll tell you, um, a lot of people don't need color for how they're using their scanner, but the way our tech uses color is really unique. It helps you to track as you're indexing, which I show in some of the other tutorials. So check that out on our YouTube channel. But other than that, that's the whole process. We could, we could save this thing out as a VRML with uh, color um, applied or an STL and go right to a 3D print uh, or a variety of different mesh formats. So we hope you found this useful. If there's any questions, you can contact us uh, with the information in the links below. And as always, uh, we hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.